Hello, my name is Will Carmack. Today I'll be showing you how to make anything kind of look like a video gamey retro asset in After Effects. Um, I've been doing a lot of old video game glowy style stuff recently and I'm kind of obsessed with the look. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in After Effects with no external plugins, you know? So don't worry, this won't be like a long tutorial where they're record, they're using resources that come from other websites in the description. It's like always the worst. And it's like they didn't give you a heads up that halfway through the tutorial and you need a plugin that's $50. So I got your back. Let's go. Bang. We're in After Effects here, and I'm just gonna create um, a solid just to use as like my base animation. I'll show you guys. I'm basically gonna create like a video game button. Let's make this purple, so it'll just be a whole black solid. And I'll come up to this mask rectangle tool at the top. Make sure my solid is selected, and I'll create like this shape here, kind of like a square rectangle. Now I can actually take that rectangle tool and then make another mask in the middle of it. And if you look down here in the layers panel, you can just hit subtract. So now I've kind of created like this strokey box type shape. Uh, love that. Uh, and what we can actually do with this now is if we go to effects and resets. So here's one of my tips is bevel. You can do bevel alpha. You see this effect there? I'll make the edges look buttony. Let's make this full resolution so you can see it a little better. But if you come up to the effect control panel over here, you can actually crank up the edge thickness and you're kind of like creating a button right there. Bam. Um, even if I get rid of the second mask, it'll make way more sense because you can see the square here now, now looks just like a button. If I come up to the type tool and then type go, just like that, drop that in the very middle. Oop, I hit, I hit caps lock. When you hit caps lock, it shuts down all of After Effects. Back to this. So I can put this go right here here and bam we've got like a go button but let's say we want to make this um, even more video gamey let's pre-compose both of these and say this is the go button you can see that my pre-comp hiding in the corner there bam so we got go love that and so there's an effect I absolutely love called Venetian blinds this is how you get kind of like the LCD screen the lines that kind of make old TVs Venetian blinds is what we always use to recreate that Venetian blinds is under transition so you can see when I start cranking up in the control panels the transition completion the lines the like the video game TV lines I'm talking about so we have to change the direction here to a 90 love that uh, and you can kind of play with the width down here I kind of like it to make it more subtle because if you look to me uh, this works because the problem is if you crank the transition up too much you lose a lot of your graphic or if you make the width of your lines too much uh, you can just see it can easily look really stupid so I try and kind of like balance the line between it being really noticeable and barely noticeable and I always kind of decide on something like this. Very subtly noticeable. We don't want it to be overwhelmingly like, this is a video game thing. All right, so let's see. I like that. Looks very video gamey. Okay. And now this one's very fun. Um, we're going to create another black solid and we're going to make the digitizing lines that kind of fly through holograms. If that doesn't make sense, just watch new solid. And I'll, I'll make these white lines. So like we'll create a white solid here. Bam. Um, and you know the procedure. Let's take our mask right rectangle tool and make like this big of a rectangle and it's totally okay that it's above this go button what I'm gonna do is super cool so if we click on the white solid um, I'll just rename this like scan line so if we hit P to drop down the position and now that we've dropped down position we're gonna right click on it and hit separate dimensions because all we want to do is make this um, white scan line go up and down constantly and we're gonna alpha mat it to the button you guys know maybe so I'm gonna take the Y position which again makes it go up and down and I will click alt hold alt and click the stopwatch next to Y and I'll do wiggle one comma one thousand so every one second it's gonna move up and down a thousand pixels let's see what that looks like okay, I don't know if you you see what's happening here but you see that that white line is coming up and down slowly through the frame now it's actually not doing as much as I want I maybe need to make it go up and down instead of one one thousand let's try five one thousand oh yeah do you see this so that line coming up and down it will slowly like glow white on this go button which is very like glowy video gamey so I can show you exactly what I mean so let's wait until this line is right on top of the go right like this and you see this button right here this little little T, if we hit that on the bar, you'll see that now that white line is only showing up on top of our button. Basically telling you, hey, only animate 
to the boundaries of the layer below me. So even though the scan line is, is as long as the frame, it's only gonna show up on the layer below it, which is pretty cool. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually make this scan line a bit smaller. Yeah, do you see that? That looks way better. And I'm actually gonna drop it down a little bit and maybe change it between five to three. So when it does come down, it's a little slower. And now that we see the line here, um, let's click on the scan line, hit M twice to drop down the masking menus and feather it kind of like this. So it's more of a glow. And and you can always, at the end of the day, expand the expansion. Uh, you can even make the opacity lower. So you can just make this scan line as like um, impactful as you want on your uh, animation. And what I'll do is maybe add a couple. Boop. And I'll change each one's um, expression that we wrote. So instead of being like one one thousand, I'll have it like be see like one one thousand. So some of the scan lines will be more present than others. All right. So I will take these scan lines, hit T, drop down the opacity, and we love that. Now we've got a bunch of glowy lines that are coming up and down our button. And now let's go to Effects and let's type in the effect Glow and drop that on there because of course every good button needs a goddamn glow. Now let's set it instead of behind on top over here in the control panels and let's crank the, gl the, the glow radius up, my goodness. So now we can see how the scan lines are affecting it. Very cool, very video gamey. It's actually super cool. And so now the next step, I'll give it a little bit of movement. Sometimes these little things have just tiny little jittery movements in these video game icons. So I can alt click the position on the go button and I'll type wiggle, um, let's do 310. So it's gonna move three times 10 pixels in any direction every second. <laughs> that is actually kind of cool. So now that you see like the button is a little wiggly, <laughs> that's awesome. And now of course um, I will pre-compose all of this stuff now that all of this is kind of one thing now. I'll go go button. So now we have this beautiful animation right and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the noise effect on it because it looks too perfect. It looks like a perfectly rasterized vector from like um, Adobe Illustrator. We need to give it that video game old timey retro look. So we'll throw noise on there and if I get really close and I crank the noise up, you can already see how epic it looks. Like it's not even low resolution now. So this is no noise. This is me cranking the noise up. And to me it already looks way more like a video game piece with this noise. Like just look at that. To me that is way more uh, noisy than like, um, wait that makes no sense. It's just the noise helps. This is without the noise. It looks too perfect. So with the noise, you're adding a little bit of that flavor. Love that. That. Um, and then finally, a, a nice little touch of flair I like to add on top of it is turbulent displacement. So we'll do turbulent displace. Um, <laughs> it's so crazy. I'll do um, horizontal displacement. I'll make the amount really little, and then the size. Yeah, also really kind of little. Do you see? Do you see the edges there? Like that's what we're trying to like play with. And so we zoom into the edges, and we kind of change the size around, complexity a bit. When we change the evolution, you'll see that those corners there are moving. If I zoom in really close, you can see that. And we're just trying to recreate like these wiggling pixels that will be on the edge of a video sometimes. So I will hit a keyframe for evolution here. I'll drag it to the uh, to the top of the comp. Oh, this is a two minute long comp. That's crazy. And at the end of this, I will create like, let's see, down here at evolution, I'll do like 40 rotations. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you can see that the edges are moving. There's like scan lines that are on top of it, etc, etc. Um, I can actually maybe go back into the original comp and make the Venetian blind a little crazier. See what that looks like. Yeah, that's a little better. Let's see if I get rid of bevel alpha on the original layer. Uh, maybe I'll change go to like, I have some pixely fonts. I kind of just want to see it look better. Go! <laughs> And I can actually change the color of the solid if I hit Control Shift Y. Um, so maybe I can change this button to like uh, blue. It looks cool. So if we go back to the original one, now it looks like this, which is pretty sick. And if we look really close, you can see kind of all the magic happening. Now that I have all the effects on there, I maybe wouldn't have added three scan lines, but maybe just one. But those are all the effects that I always use to make an asset in After Effects look video gamey. Honestly, guys, just
just so you know, since I like professionally and career-wise I'm a freelancer, I would never do this in my professional career. <laughs> I have this whole tutorial and I say that. But I I um I pay for um plugins called Deep Glow and Retro Dither. They're both on AE scripts, and those two together make probably the coolest retro glitch effect possible. So that's my professional recommendation, and this is just the tools you can use to create. By the way, it's not like this is better or that's better. When you pay for these plugins, it just makes this process 10 times easier. It just makes it faster. So this is just as good as everything I just said you could buy. This is just the, the harder workaround and a lot more fine tuning. Like if I wanted to add chromatic displacement to this animation, it's a whole fucking thing just to do it in only After Effects. So Deep Glow, which is an AE script, you just turn on a switch and you can customize the chromatic aberration as much as you'd like. So yeah, those are all my tips. By the way, um, the sponsor of this video is of course Squarespace. So from online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Do you like numbers and graphs and charts? Well, Squarespace has amazing analytics. If you want to know who's coming to your website, who's buying your stuff, checking out all of your features and galleries and stuff, Squarespace has uh, the best analytics anyone could ask for. And I'm a dumb person, and so you need something that makes smart things like numbers seem easy and digestible to a person like me, and Squarespace has just literally the best and user-friendly analytics. And also, let's say you're a photographer. They have a portfolios and galleries option that is to die for. They have award-winning designer templates that you can put your photos in. So people can come to your website and you can have beautifully displayed portfolios and galleries of all of your work, making it easy for people to see your work and hire you. So photographers, get a Squarespace website. And lastly, and lastly, you can stay connected with all of your social medias via your Squarespace website. So if someone's coming to your website to buy a product, they could also find your Instagram or your Twitter or your SoundCloud. So yeah, embed your music, embed your fancy Instagram photos, and the sky's the limit. You can connect literally any of your socials to uh, Squarespace. So stay connected with Squarespace. Best part is, guys, I got you hooked up with a discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash willcarmack, you'll get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you learned something new today, and where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day. <laughs>